We'll be extending our chat with your document app with Slack integration. Slack is a very popular collaboration and communication tool used in enterprises. And for our use case of having an HR policy advisor, it can be a very useful part of the onboarding process for a new employee like Sam. We'll be adding two new nodes to our querying workflow that allows Slack to communicate to the knowledge base and another one to allow us to communicate back to Slack. So in this diagram here to the left is the Slack webhook, and on the right here is the Slack reply. Let's see first how this user experience would look like to Sam. I'm going to ask HR, what is communication policy? All right, so it gives me this response here. I'm going to ask it, what is overtime policy? Right, and then I'm going to give it a more general question. See if right, I would like to wear games to work. Is this against HR policy? All right, so Busy B has a, a professional business attire policy, and it uh, finds that and then talks about how wearing jeans would be related to the policy. Let's go ahead and set up the Slack bot. We'll do a walkthrough of the Slack developer portal quick start first. There are four steps to the setup. We'll first create a Slack app. Then we'll give it the right permissions, including the authorization to post to our channel and the ability to access public Slack channels in our workspace. We'll then create a new Slack command, and then we'll install and authorize the app and test it. All right, I'm going to go to my quick start page and I'm going to select create an app. All right, so I'll go ahead and create this app. I'm going to just do it from scratch. I'm going to call this Busy B HR and I'm going to select this workspace and then I'm going to create the app. All right, so the app is uh, created. Now I want to be able to uh, give it permission. So I'll go ahead and give it a couple of permissions. I mentioned that uh, there are um, a, a couple of permissions that I, I want to provide. So I will go here to the bot one here, and then I'm going to say chat, right? And also channel read. All right. So I've got these two permissions. Now I'm going to go and go to slash commands and I want to create a new command. So I'm going to say ask HR is my command name. Now this re request URL is going to call into uh, my web hook in NA10. So we'll cover that uh, shortly. But right now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go into my uh, workflow and I'm going to select the production URL in my web flow in my webhook, and then I'm going to copy this, all right? So I'll use this as the way to call into uh, my uh, NA10 workflow. And then I'm going to uh, call it ask HR vote policy. And I'll go ahead and save this. All right, so uh, by adding this uh, slash HR command, uh, if you look at the OAuth permissions, it automatically added this uh, ability here to uh, interact with the, the bot using commands. All right, so so we have three permissions. We've created our, our app. We created our um, what's called a webhook that will call into uh, the Slack will call into our N8 hand flow. There's one more thing that we'll enable. So we'll go back to our app homes, and then we are going to select um, go to the bottom and select allow users to send slash commands and messages to the message tab. So this allows um, the user to talk directly to our um, to our bot, right? So we'll, we'll select that. And then the last step we're going to do is install it, right? So we'll go ahead and install to the workspace. And then I'm going to allow it. 
All right, so it's installed. Now let's go ahead and check it out. All right, so I can see in here, in my Slack uh, workspace, I have a uh, Slack bot, the BusyBee HR, and I can talk to it. So I can say slash ask HR, what is the time policy? All right, so we have this here and it's uh, um, got uh, access to this uh, knowledge knowledge base now. And I can go to here, to general channel as well. I can say here, slash HR, and I can say, what is the overtime policy? All right, so it's also enabled here. Now, I'm gonna just double check that it is running uh, exactly as I expected. So I'll go back to my workflow and I'll go into uh, the, et the executions tab, okay? So the execution tab allows me to see what has been executed, right? So right now uh, it's running this workflow and I can I can go ahead and tap into here. So I can see what's being passed in, what is overtime policy. I can see it being passed into my, um, my, my uh, AI uh, chatbot here. And I can also see more details here about it accessing the vector store and also uh, what it's retrieving, all right? And then of course the response uh, that is being sent uh, to back to the Slack channel. So let's step back now and see how to add the two nodes we need for Slack integration. All right, so let's first add the first node, which is a webhook. So let's first explain uh, what a webhook is. At the core of it, a webhook is a very simple idea, right? It is just a digital messenger that allows two different programs, in our case, Slack and NA10, to talk to one another, right? So as you saw in uh, the previous example, we were able to uh, tell Slack here is the webhook to call NT10 using a URL. And when that uh, slash HR, ask HR command is hit, it's just going to call into this webhook or this URL. So we're going to associate this URL. And what I'm going to do first is uh, put it in test mode. I don't have any authentication, so but I, I am using a post command. So I will uh, listen for the test event. So I'm going to go back to, uh, let me just do that again. I will use a test event first, test URL, listen to it, copy it first. I'll listen to this event. And I'm going to go back to my webhooks, my slash command here. I'll edit it. I'll point it to the webhook on the test side, just so that you can see how this was constructed. So I'll save this. All right, and then now uh, what I'm gonna do here is ask it a question, slash. What is the overtime policy? All right, so Slack will then go and call the webhook that I associated. So in this, uh, in my NA10 workflow, as you can see here, uh, I was listening to this event and I got this information here that was sent by Slack. So it told me what command I was using and the text, all right? So this is a text that I want. So it's passed that into there. And then, so I'm gonna hook it up to my QA chain. And now I'm going to tell it all right, so this text here, I'm going to drag it into here, all right? So I've already done that, but that's how you would associate the information, right? So what, what, what's happening is that when uh, Slack uh, detects the slash ask HR command, it's going to call the webhook that's associated, right? So this URL, 
And then this URL will get information and it's going to pass this information from uh, what I got from Slack. And it's going to go into here and I'm going to associate that with um, the question I'm going to ask in my retrieval Q and A chain. All right. All right. Now I'm going to uh, create the uh, second node. So I'll add to into here a HTTP request. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to again choose the post method, and from the URL, um, what I'm going to do is go back to my webhook. Right at the beginning of uh, the call, Slack has given me a another webhook. So this is how I'm going to communicate back to Slack. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to specify this is the URL that I'm going to call into so that Slack knows uh, the response text and uh, is able to then uh, put that as a response from my slash ask HR uh, command. Right? So I'll do that. I'm going to um, send a body. And inside this body, I'm going to say the text. Right? This is the text value uh, that I want uh, to return. And it's going to have a value that is coming from um, the retrieval train. So I'll go ahead and then specify here, this is the value. All right, so I'm going to respond uh, by getting the uh, URL, the webhook that Slack has provided me uh, initially when it's called this, uh, called my webhook, and then I'm going to pass into it this value here that I returned from the large language model, right? So that's basically the flow. Let's let's go ahead and uh, test this out. So I will save this, and I will once again put this in listen mode. All right, and I'm going to go back to my Slack channel, and I'm going to say slash ask what is overtime policy, right? So what it will do is that the workflow started. All right, so I see that uh, inside my NJ10, this is uh, the text that we got. I'm going to go to my next node here, and I'm going to test the step. All right, I'm testing the step, and you can see here that it's got a response. So. In the logs here, what you'll see is that it's actually going through, passing the query, what is OPRAM policy, and then going to the vector database that I've got the top five uh, matches. And then from there, uh, it's embedded that information right into the large language model uh, context. And then finally, it's able to then uh, give me the output. Okay, so I'll execute that step and then I'm going to go to the next node. And then this node will have the information that, um, all right, so this text response uh, will have uh, the value that uh, is from the large language model. All right, I'm going to test end to end now. I'm going to uh, go back to my webhook use the production URL. So previously we were testing with a test URL. Now let's use the production one. So I'll copy this. I'll go back to my uh, Slack uh, developer portal and I'm gonna edit my webhook, change this to a production URL. I'll save that. And then I also need to um, activate this. So I'll activate the workflow now. So it's a uh, constantly listening for this webhook. All right. So now that I've done that, I will go ahead and use my command. Okay, so now it's calling into the webhook and it's giving me this result. Now notice that uh, there is this uh, extra uh, message here. So let's just turn that off uh, because that's good for um, development purposes, but when we deploy, we don't want that. So I'll just update the first response, add here, no response body. So, all right, I'll then turn this on here and then I'll save and then I'll just go back and try it out.
Okay, so this message is now gone.